Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRooter.com with your morning horn of Z's. <clears throat> I didn't have coffee this morning, I'm trying to stay away a little bit. Um, but I want to talk about a huge news item that nobody's talking about. That uh, It's about Noble Group. And if you've been following the Road to Ruta, uh, Noble Group and I go way back. <clears throat> Noble Group was the third largest uh, commodity derivative trader in the world. Uh, more on the physical side, along with Glencore and Trafigura, which were Mark Rich's company. And those of you who know the conspiracy behind Mark Rich in the, the final days of the Bill Clinton White House, where he pardoned Mark Rich. <coughs> um, Mark Rich ran the strong dollar policy for the United States on the physical side of the commodities. Um, very covert guy, didn't really worked for any uh, country specifically, worked for himself, um, the largest and most criminal uh, commodity trader in the world. And commodity traders are pretty much criminal in general anyway. Um, if you read the book Metal Men, M-E-T-A-L-M-E-N, it gives you an idea of who Mark Rich was. So Mark Rich split his company pretty much into three companies, but uh, from the Mark, Mark Rich group to Glencore, Trafigura, and then many of the same people went to Noble Group. And all these traders basically are buddies and trade back and forth with each other, rig the markets up and down, um, get uh, special passes from uh, governments and CIA, NSA, Mossad, you name it. They would work for anybody and do anything for money. And that was the mainly Glencore. It was all came from Mark Rich and his guys. Um, in the 90s and then <clears throat> 80s and 90s, 70s, 80s and 90s. I mean, they've been in charge of everything for a long time. Um, and all three of those companies are knee-deep in derivatives. And that was kind of a linchpin of the latest derivative crashes back in like 2014, 2015. Uh, but they they made it through through China, basically bailing everybody out in the derivative world, including Deutsche Bank. Um, but now we have a new problem. As per Zero Hedge, it's... Uh, Goldman Sachs versus J.P. Morgan as the ISDA's noble decision royals the CDS market. ISDA is the International Standards of Derivative Association. <clears throat> Basically, Noble Group has defaulted on a bunch of um, their obligations. And you got Goldman on one side who bought the CDSs, and you got J.P. Morgan on the other side who sold them the CDSs. And the ISDA is kind of like the CFTC very much like the CFTC, in that they will go and um, clear the path and rig the markets. There's Noble Group as a member of the ISDA. Here's a really interesting thing, though. If you look at the about board of direct, or let's go to executives, and right at the top, the chief executive of the ISDA is our friend Scott O'Malia from the CFTC. <clears throat> That's where he ended with his cushy job of... <clears throat> After being, you know, facilitating the silver manipulation at the CFTC, Scott O'Malley went over to the ISDA. Uh, Blythe Masters was at the ISDA during all the crashes um, of her credit default swaps, rewrote the rules. Uh, basically, it's an international regulatory agency, not, af not affiliated at all with any government or international regulatory body. It is affiliated 100% with the banksters writing rules for their own game. Um, and that's what they do. They write rules for their own game, and they change the rules when they need to be changed. And that's what Goldman Sachs is all pissed off about. Noble Group went bankrupt, or didn't go bankrupt, defaulted. And J.P. Morgan was the payee, payor, and they didn't pay. And the ISDA ruled a no ruling. <laughs> Insane. Let me read a little bit of this. Several years ago, the International Swaps and Derivative, oh, it's International Swaps and Derivative Association, or ISDA, lost much of its credibility when during the peak of the Eurozone debt crisis, it first refused to determine that CDS on, credit default swaps <clears throat> on Greece had been triggered, only to eventually concede following substantial outside pressure that Greece had, in fact, defaulted. Who, <laughs> I mean... The concept of these bankers twisting the rules in their own contracts is, is just hysterical to the core. Uh, but not before pinning a petulant 
blog post in which it claimed amusingly that the credit event DC process is fair, transparent, and well-tested. The fiasco prompted many this site included to dub foreign credit default swaps as Schrodinger, Schrodinger's CDS contracts, which may or may not pay out in case of default, depending on which way the political winds are blowing at any given time. Fast forward to today, when not only is ISDA in hot water again, but the entire corporate CDS market has been roiled by another indecision by the ISDA, which said, quote, it was unable to determine if Singapore listed Noble Group, that's the Mark Rich, number three commodity trader in the world, formerly Asia's largest independent commodity trader, was in default or not, creating a similar vacuum to what happened with Greece five years ago, in which, according to the Financial Times, has resulted in mass confusion in the corporate bond and CDS market. What is more striking, however, is that, quote, this is, quote, the first time the ISDA has dismissed a question of default without making a ruling either way. They have a division within the ISDA that is supposed to rule one way or the other whether or not a, a default event has happened. That's the whole idea by, behind a credit default swap. And so they're stuck between Goldman Sachs, criminal Goldman Sachs, criminal J.P. Morgan. Both of them control the ISDA through their other bankers, and they're supposed to pick a winner. And they're having a problem. So what did they say? No decision. <clears throat> <clears throat> so on August night, I got a little cold. Sorry about that. <laughs> August night, ISDA ruled the following. The AEJ Determinations Committee, that's, that's their committee that is supposed to rule one way or the other has discussed over the course of a number of meetings the question as to whether a restructuring credit event has occurred in respect to Noble Group. The AEJDC considers it that it currently does not have sufficient information that is public or that can be made public to determine the restructuring credit event DC question one way or the other. In particular, the AEJDC has not been able to obtain the underlying document in respect to the borrowing base facility and amendments thereto and Noble's guarantee in respect to the relevant documentation. How could they not have the documentation? If one side is clearly jumping up and down saying, hey, there's a default, did they not give them the documentation? Is there any documentation? Or was there criminality within the documentation? More likely, there's criminality within the documentation that J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs knew that they couldn't hand this over to these this quote regulator, a regulating body. <clears throat> Noble Group, of course, had for the past two years been one of the best advanced indicators of stress in the Asian economy. Markets had, as noted here in 2015. Since then, the company's acute troubles intensified, leading to repeat near insolvency profit collapse and accelerated asset liquidation meant to stave off an inevitable default. Last month, Bloomberg summarized Noble's woes best. Quote, Noble Group has been in crisis for more than two years, marked by vast losses, mounting concern it will default, and accusations it inflated the value of some contracts, which it's denied. In an effort to raise funds, placate investors, and pay down the debt, the company has been selling businesses. With billions of dollars of borrowing outstanding, J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. said in a note that a coupon payment to July 29th on its 2020 bonds is now a key tracking event. The noble salvage process accumulated most recently with an extension to noble's loan repayment terms, an event which many CDS buyers, if not sellers and creditors, said amounted to debt restructuring and adds that FT FT adds, the dispute rippled through the debt markets in London and Asia last week after banks and funds served notice to sellers of CDS protection. This is when the problem first emerged because earlier in the month, the ISDA committee responsible for deciding on the status of Noble's debt said it was unable to determine if the Singapore-listed commodity trader was in default or not, creating a vacuum that allowed bilateral claims to proliferate across the market. It is the first time the ISDA has dismissed a question of default without making a ruling in either way. So basically, the ISDA said, no, nah, well, we don't know if it's a default. We have no idea. And so basically, Noble has restructured their debt, which they're not allowed to do. That's a, an event of default under the contracts. And 
they did it because the ISA didn't rule. So why isn't the ISA ruling now? I mean, the, the debt has been restructured. It's very simple. These are criminal organizations, hugely criminal. And these are the monster derivative. These are the derivative games. We're talking hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars wrapped up in Noble Group and Glencore and J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs and the derivatives around gold and silver. For all we know, these are silver contracts that Noble Group was knee-deep in silver. And same, same with uh, Glencore and Trafigura. All criminal. Uh, all, I mean, they dealt in all the metal commodities. So things look like they're starting to fall apart again. And remember, with ISD rulings, basically this was the beginning of August, and with their ruling for it to roll out to be official, it's three weeks. So they couldn't roll it out at the beginning of August because they would, wouldn't would have got to the bad guys and the good guys and everybody who wants the system to collapse. It wouldn't have gotten farther enough into September to allow the collapse to happen on cue, which is nearing the end of September, beginning of October, is when the plan is to destroy the system, or at least begin the destruction of the system. So the IS, keep an eye on the ISDA. I'll keep an eye on it for you if you're not real interested in this stuff, because when they declare Noble Group was in default, then all of a sudden these these contracts and um, and derivatives will start having to be paid out. And that's when people like J.P. Morgan, who, who are on the other side of these transactions, start losing. And, and then they, they hedge their own position, like Black Master says, we always run an even book hedging their positions. So J.P. Morgan will have to pay out you know, $20, $30 billion, billion in derivative contracts. But luckily they hedged with some unknown bank somewhere in the middle of Asia who was just looking for the fees and then they sold it all to an insurance group like AIG is what happened last time. So you're going to see the insurance group start falling apart. It's the exact same thing that happened in 2008. And it's about to start happening again. So there's your update on the Noble Group. And make sure you go to RoadToRuid.com and do a search right here in the search function. Type in Noble Group. G-R-O-U-P. And check out how many articles. 296 articles with Noble Group in there at the Road to Ruda. If you want more information on, on how derivatives work, and especially metal derivatives and that type of contract and CDSs, just type in Noble Group or Glencore, Trafigura, Blythe Masters. She's in there. She, Blythe was the one who rewrote the whole ISDA uh, uh, governing document after the 2008 collapse that she caused through her credit default swaps. So very interesting stuff. Round and round we go. And where we stop, nobody knows. This is Big Square, RoadToRuda.com. We'll talk to you soon.